Georgia Data Show. Today began, begins a series of meeting the candidates, people who are seeking the office of city council in the city of Detroit. I'm sure you've heard by now more than 160 people have filed. The question is how many of those people will end up in the final count and who are they and where do they come from? I'm excited to introduce to you two candidates, attorney Michael Crawford, uh, who's a general practitioner here in the city of Detroit, and Raphael B. Johnson, who is a counselor, speaker, and trainer. I'd like to thank both of you uh, for joining us. Of course, you certainly bring uh, to this race a different little perspective, and you come from different places. Uh, we'll talk with you first. Uh, counselor, you are a native Detroiter. I am. Uh, in Detroit, it's always important to say what high school you graduated. <laughs> now, if I went to another city, I'd say, where did you get your undergraduate degree? Right, but in Detroit, right. high school seems to be very important to people. So where did you graduate from high school? I graduated from Cass Tech. How did I know you were going to say that? I don't know. And you went from Cass Tech on to? Uh, University of Michigan. Uh, there I earned my electrical engineering degree. And you went from electrical engineering, engineering into law? Indeed. Uh, Raphael? Yes. Uh, Detroit, Michigan, Cass Tech. Uh, I went to U of D. I have, I have to make this disclaimer. I went to U of D for three and a half years, and I ended up graduating from Cass Tech. I went on to Blackstone School of Law, and then I went on to University of Detroit Mercy for my bachelor's and my graduate degree. I'll just leave the studio now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Ca two te Cass Tech graduates. That's an interesting place to be from in this city. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, a counselor, uh, fir first I want to know from you, what is it that excites you about your drive to, to run? Why? After all, you're a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I understand uh, you do quite well in the legal profession. Mm -hmm. Why take a pause and, and run for city council? Well, uh, primarily because I think uh, our city needs us. It, it needs the next generation of, of some of the best of Detroiters to step up into leadership roles. Uh, I've, personally, I've sensed this coming on since undergrad, actually, and I've always asked myself, well, what can I do to be a part of this? Uh, but particularly uh, once uh, Barack Obama was elected president and, and put the challenge to us all to get more involved uh, and help him make the changes in America, I started asking myself very seriously, what can I do here in Detroit? And practicing law, I realized, uh, wouldn't be enough for me. And there was a great opportunity to get involved and be a part of the change that Detroit needs here today. Now, Raphael Johnson is, I mean, if, if, if he looks familiar to a lot mm -hmm. of you, that's because not only has he been active in the city of Detroit, you've also seen him uh, as a counselor, trainer, a tough guy on the Mari Povich show, uh, uh, addressing issues of, of teens who've gone astray. Uh, I mean, you're almost in Hollywood. I mean, and you're taking a pause to run for city council. Yes, yes I am. Um, you know, the type of work that I do, Mr. Gaddis, I'm in the business of saving lives, if you will. I want to transfer that energy, transfer that inspiration, that hope over to the city council. We need leadership that's going to be bold, that's going to be courageous, that's going to be academically sound and rational, who can steer the ship properly while the storm is brewing. So what I want to do is I want to bring that type of synergy to the city council and inspire our citizens to do better and to pull themselves up by the bootstrap. And let's take this on. I know you all have heard the, the criticisms uh, and the critiques about what's happening on city council. Mm -hmm. People have been embarrassed mm -hmm. uh, by the lack of professionalism and the buffoonery that uh, exudes from that legislative body from time to time. Um, they're saying we want educated people, we want professional people, mm -hmm. we want people who understand uh, that Detroit has almost gone to the very bottom but who are committed to help getting it right sized up again. Well definitely, I, I, I totally agree. Um, uh, the behavior we've seen has been ho wholly unacceptable. We need to get a level of professionalism back in, into city council uh, such that that uh, body can be respected and be effective in advocating for the people. Um, I think I've got that set of skills. Uh, I think I've been trained for that uh, since I was young. Um, I'm not going to disrespect this city, embarrass myself. I'm not going to uh, embarrass the city. I'm constantly going to try to be a beacon to make the city proud uh, from the city council table, uh, whether it be here or whether dealing with those uh, other leaders in our area or in Lansing, or if I had to go to the federal government, I would do Detroit proud, and that's what Detroit needs, uh, effective, articulate, and qualified leadership, and that's what I think I'd provide. You know, Mildred, I worked for uh, Goodwill for corporate for approximately two years. And one thing I learned in my experience with corporate America is you must be professional at all times. You're dealing with Detroit, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. It is a big business. There's no way in the world that Detroiters who 
work for the city of Detroit, and I, I, I view the city of Detroit as a business and as the, the mayor, as a CEO, and the city council as a board of directors. That board of directors must exhibit professionalism to the apex at all times. And in business, in corporate, if you're not acting professional, your pay will be docketed. So as a city councilman, that's the first thing that we're going to tackle. We're going to attack the lack of professionalism. We need professional development in the city. There's no way that you should be coming to work with your house shoes on. You do that in any other business, you're out of there. There's no way that you be, should be coming. You, gotta, you have a, a lunch break or snack break every 10 minutes. It's, it's almost it's unacceptable. So Detroiters need to see the professional. They need to get back into being hopeful about their city government. It's going to take professional people, people who are connected to the community, but people who are professional and who have the best interests of the community at their hearts. You know, there have been a lot of announcements lately here in Michigan with Governor Jennifer Granholm and others. Mm -hmm. um, she's announced uh, movie companies moving. She, she's announced other businesses coming to um, the state of Michigan. What has been missing in the midst of all of that, the state's largest city seems to be missing in action. Right. And uh, not only is that, is that the case, uh, more importantly, nobody seems to be saying, wait just a second, Madam Governor, mm -hmm. Wait just a second, powers that be. We've got the highest unemployment rate in the state in the city of Detroit, which is double that in the state of Michigan. When we come back from this break, I'd like for you all to, uh, to talk about uh, the, the, the silence. Uh, Detroiters need jobs. Mm -hmm. How do we get people who are in control of steering those particular companies mm -hmm. and those jobs to the state of Michigan? How do we get them here in the city of Detroit? Excellent. Okay? Mm -hmm. We'll be back. Stay with us. We'll get answers to those questions and more right after this. Welcome back to the show. Detroit attorney Michael Crawford and Raphael B. Johnson, two candidates for Detroit City Council, are joining, joining me for today's show. And of course, this kicks off a series of shows we're going to do to introduce the candidates to the people of Detroit. Before that break, I ask each of you about the fact that nobody's talking about jobs, jobs, jobs for the city of Detroit. Not only are they not talking about it, they're being able to get away with not addressing that issue. Well, uh, again, from city council, we need them to be a stronger voice, more assertive in expressing the needs of Detroit and its workers. As you, as you mentioned earlier, we've got the highest unemployment rate uh, for a city uh, in the country, let alone definitely here in the state. Um, they, that needs to be coming out of their mouths all the time. They need to set up the meetings, whether go down to Lansing, knock on the doors, do whatever is necessary. Detroit's struggling, and it needs advocates who are, who are passionate and who can effectively communicate, we need help here in the city. And the bottom line, if I may say one more thing, is Detroit's the backbone of, of Michigan, particularly the southeast region. We can't be ignored. And we need to make our partners in, in the surrounding metro area and down in Lansing understand the answer includes Detroit. First of, all, first of all, as a leader, you must be connected with the people that you lead. If you're connected with the people, you understand the pains that they're feeling. Um, and you have to get out into the community with them. Number one, as a city councilman, what I want to bring to the table is a statesman-like uh, aura. I want to be the, the voice of diplomacy. You have to have that in order to talk to big businesses to come into the city to, uh, to, to, to be a service to our people. Here's the thing, uh, Mildred, what no one is really talking about. Yes, we are number one city in unemployment. However, we also have 17,000 probationers and parolees walking the streets now. A person with a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, is getting pink slips. A person with 30 years investing inside the auto industries is getting pink slips. What about the 12,000 that Jennifer Graham Holm is going to be releasing? 12,000 prisoners, ex-offenders, back into the community. Now, they don't have jobs. People with degrees and going to school all their lives don't have jobs what are we going to do with them so here's my idea we have to track more businesses how are we going to do that we have to provide uh, equitable and fair tax abatement that we can look at other cities surrounding other cities and make that in comparison to theirs businesses i would i would this is what i would do and i'm saying it on your show so nobody copy me um i would say i have to say that i have to, i have to say that as a city councilman, I would propose that these, in order to lure businesses back to the city of Detroit, we give them a two to three year tax abatement. This would allow the business owners 